これだけなさったらよくない
Do you have any question about that? <laughs> so here we have one pound is equals to one point six dollars. That's the market exchange rate. Pound is equals to one point six dollars in the market. Okay? Yes. One pound is equals to one point seven dollars PPP. Yes. Exchange. Okay? So which one is pound is weaker? Where is the pound weaker? I'm getting more dollars here. One pound gives me more dollars. Yes. Is that weaker or stronger? This is a stronger pound. And this is a weaker pound. Okay? So which this is the current situation in the market. So is the pound overvalued or undervalued? Undervalued. Undervalued. It's too weak. Okay? If it's too weak, it's undervalued. If it's too strong, it's overvalued. Okay? Any more questions? So we use this absolute PPP, this number, we use this number to estimate, to say whether a foreign currency spot rate is overvalued or undervalued. And then we can think about the possible future move. So absolute PPP European terms, we can also learn this way. If PPP spot is less than current spot, then the currency is overvalued. Is this European terms or American terms? European terms or American terms? American terms, US dollars on the right. Okay? So if we look at American terms, if PPP spot is higher than current spot, then the currency is undervalued. Okay? Is PPP higher than the current spot? In this case, is the PPP spot higher than the current spot? Yes. So then, the British currency is undervalued. Okay? So we can also learn that way, kind of uh, memorizing, right? On the other hand, if the PP spot is less than the current spot, then the currency is overvalued. This is American terms. Okay? Then European terms is the other way around. <clears throat> so we said that the PPP is saying, whether this exchange rate is correct or the currency is undervalued or overvalued. Okay. So how much how much is it overvalued or undervalued? We could see the Swiss case, there was a big difference. British case, just a little bit different. Okay. So we can where can we get the data? One source is the Big Mac index of the Economist. Have you seen this before? We show just briefly on the thing, but we can go to the chart where they they keep it uh, updated. So we can see the latest uh, data. kind of a world map. What do you think the red color is? Overvalued or undervalued? Overvalued. China is overvalued. Russia is overvalued. So the red color is undervalued by more than 50%. Maybe you can't. The thing is a little bit off. Uh, let me just reduce the size of the screen. So here we can see that the red is undervalued by more than 50%. Blue is overvalued. We're talking about against the dollar. So we, are most currencies overvalued or undervalued against the dollar? Undervalued. 
Why do you think these Asian countries are undervalued against the dollar? Japan, they, Korea, China. They export to the US. They're exporters, right? They want to export to the US. Mm, Britain similar to the US, right? Euro currently a little bit undervalued against the dollar. Good time to go on holidays to Europe. <laughs> Cheap Euro, right? So you can look at this map. Where should I go on holidays if I look at this map? Russia. Russia. Okay, so you can try to make friends with the exchange students, right? Then when they leave, you can ask them, oh, maybe I'll come and visit Russia this summer. I'd like to go to uh, Vladivostok, to your hometown, right? So, uh, where is your hometown again? Hmm? What's the name? Rostov on Don. Rostov on Don. Okay. So then you can make friends and can send an email, and then they can help you to go to Russia, right? Then you can have a very expensive holiday. But what does this tell you about Russian students who are coming to study in Korea? It's not easy, right? More Korea seems expensive to you. What is seems very expensive in Korea? What is expensive in Korea? Everything. <laughs> yes, especially food and transport. Ah. Mm. But I think food and transport is cheap in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to Ireland, right? So we have the different... Uh, right, so here, not many countries are overvalued. Switzerland, is overvalued by 30 or 40 percent. Norway. Are you going to go on holidays to Norway or Switzerland? If you go for lunch in Switzerland, it costs about 30 dollars <laughs> for some sausages and potatoes, that kind of thing. Right? So, also in Norway, it's a nice place to visit, but too expensive. So, is there any English-speaking country you can visit for a holiday that's low? New Zealand and Australia, close to South Korea. No other English-speaking country. Maybe South Africa, if you want to study English and go to South Africa. Flight is very expensive. <laughs> So, just they make this, we already, they check the price of the Big Mac in the different countries. How much does it cost in US dollars? So let's choose Russia. Okay, so we can see this is the under overvaluation against the dollar over time since the year 2000. How much does it cost in Russia? $1.88. Now $1.88 for a Big Mac. Okay. Actual exchange rate 56.8, implied exchange rate 22.3. Would you like if the exchange rate was 22.3? You would be better as students in Korea, right? So undervalued by 60%. What about in Korea? Can you remember how much the Big Mac cost in Russia? So let's check Korea. Korea is $3.76, so Big Mac is about twice the price. What? Uh, implied exchange rate, similar to the OECD, about 800. It should be 890 for one dollar. But it is 1,144. So undervalued by 20% against the dollar, according to the Big Mac index. So interestingly, we can see uh, Japan, in the last couple of years, Japan has done a very aggressive QE uh, program. So they are actually now more undervalued than uh, South Korea against the dollar. So if we look at Japan, it's actually cheaper in Japan now to buy a Big Mac. So if we look at Japan, we can see here in 2000 and 
This time it was the same as the dollar and then undervalued a lot against the dollar over this time period, down to 50%. Okay. So, big movement. So do you have any question about the Big Mac index? You can look at that yourself at the link at home if you want to see more information. So interpreting the data of the Big Mac index, this is 2010. In the United States, the Big Mac is $3.71. In China, the Big Mac costs 14.5 yuan. Given the exchange rate of 6.6, .6, it means that the Big Mac in China was just 2.18. So what did we do here? We looked at the price of the Big Mac in China, we divide it by the exchange rate, and we get the price in US dollars. So 2.18 US dollars in China. So if we want to make the absolute PPP, uh, we get the exchange rate, or sorry, the, chi the price in China divided by the price in the US. So this should be the exchange rate between China and the US, 3.9, which would be a lot stronger Chinese RMB. We can see currently it's still about 6 point something, but over the long term it's going towards this trend. So this suggests the, yacht, the Chinese Yuan was undervalued by 41%. So what would happen if China had the same valuation as the US? Well, it might be harmful for Japan, or China's export and industry. So we can see that uh, we have here undervalues and under overvalued currencies. <laughs> we can see that the currencies have changed. Uh, this is Lu one. Blue circle is July 2007. Black circle, July 2012. So some countries like Switzerland stayed almost the same. Norway got more overvalued, right? Euro area, this is until 2012. Okay, so you can also compare the change over time. So the euro was introduced in 1999. The first day of the trading price of the euro was $1.18. That's roughly today's price. Okay. So at that time, according to the Big Mac data, we could try to make the absolute PPP spot rate by comparing the price of the Big Mac in Europe and the Big Mac in the US. And that would have told us that this should be the exchange, should have been the exchange rate between almost one for one almost a parity exchange rate, one-to-one. -one. So, what does the absolute PPP spot rate suggest about the euro on the day it was introduced? The euro was overvalued or undervalued? So, this is what it should be, and then this is what it is in the market. Okay, so we can go back and check is the euro European terms or American terms? Euro and US dollars. European terms or American terms? American terms. So we go here, American terms. If PPP spot is greater than current spot, then the currency is undervalued. Is the PPP spot greater than the current spot in Europe? Yes. In that case? Yes. No, it's not. Right? Current spot was 118. The PPP spot was 1.04. So the PPP spot was one was uh, lower than the current spot, right? PPP spot 104. Current spot was 118. Then the currency is overvalued. So was the euro overvalued or undervalued? Overvalued, overvalued according to the Big Mac index. Okay. Another way we can think about this is here we are getting more dollars for our euro. Here we're getting less dollars for our euro. Okay? This is the market rate, so it's overvalued.
So it was overvalued by 12% the start. So what happened to the euro? This is 2009, uh, sorry, 1999. The euro went from 118 down to 1 to 1, the first uh, year. Changed by about 18 or 20 percent, the exchange rate. Is this the, the euro getting stronger or getting weaker? Stronger. Okay, so we said that, sorry, weaker. So the euro is getting weaker, right? Here we have euro on the left. The graph is going down. We should remember, right? Euro is on the left. The graph is going down. Euro is getting? So we have the base currency on the left. Euro is the base currency with the dollar, right? Dollar is on the right. Okay, the dollar is going down. What's happening? Yes, what's happening? Euro is getting? There's two ways we can do this. The first way is the long way. We can think about it like you did. Am I getting more dollars or less dollars for my euro? Less dollars. Is the, do is the euro getting weaker or stronger? Weaker. You should be more sure about that. Am I getting more dollars or less dollars for my euro? Is the euro getting stronger or weaker? If I get less dollars for the euro, it's getting weaker, okay? So if we look at the graph, and the graph is going down, is it getting stronger, the base currency getting stronger or weaker? Weaker. Always, right? The graph is going down, left-hand side currency is getting weaker. So the euro is getting weaker here, okay? So did we expect that to happen? We said the euro was overvalued. Did we expect it to get weaker? Overvalued currency, do we expect it to get stronger or weaker? Weaker, weaker to come back to equilibrium. Okay? That's what happened on the first year. It doesn't always happen like that. So, in practice, uh, these kind of things that we talked about earlier, like no tariffs, no cultural differences, they do exist. So that complicates calculating the absolute PPP. So use of this to test the correctness of the spot rate depends on a number of factors. First, goods that are tradable. Okay? So can we trade the goods in different markets? Goods that are comparable, comparable, are the goods really similar in quality and quantity? We talked about peaches in Korea. Peaches in Ireland, you talked about rice in Vietnam, rice in Japan. Can we compare the quality? Are there any tariffs or quotas, which means we, we can't compare easily to goods? Are there any cultural differences? So, <clears throat> if we look at the discrepancy, do you understand discrepancy? Discrepancy means difference. The difference between the absolute PPP and actual FX rates. Okay, so we ask, the FX rate is different. The market rate is different than the PPP rate. So in Korea, market rate 900. PPP rate 1100. Or sorry, the other way around. Market rate 1100, PPP rate 900. So we have to look at the reasons to see do you think the Korean won will get stronger against the dollar or not? Because now, now is the Korean won overvalued or undervalued? So one, one dollar is equals to 1,101. Okay, this is market rate. Or we can call this also the FX rate, right? Yeah. And then the one is equals to 900 one. That is PPP rate. rate. So what does that suggest will happen in the future? Korean one is stronger. Korean one should get stronger to equal things out over time. Do you think the Korean one will get stronger uh, against the dollar or not? No. Don't know. Hmm? 
We saw that the Korean won was undervalued against the Japanese yuan, but for 20 years it was constantly undervalued. So we have to try to understand the reasons. Why do you think the Korean won is undervalued against the, the US dollar? Because Korea is an exporting country. Korea is an exporting country and they want to promote their exports. Do you think Korea will allow their currency to get stronger against the dollar? No. 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 So if we can understand the reason why we have a difference, it, it can help us to forecast the future. Okay? So we have to examine the exchange rate regime and the commitment of the government of the regime. Okay? So, for example, uh, does this account for the discrepancy between the absolute PPP and spot rate? Clearly the Chinese yuan is managed float. So in the, do you think the Chinese government is going to allow the Chinese yuan to get weaker or get stronger suddenly? No, why not? Why not? Exports. Okay, China has a lot of unemployed people in Western China who need work. Okay, those people can be employed making exports. Okay, so second, are there any economic or financial conditions which could account for the discrepancy and how long might they dominate the spot rate? So economic performance, interest rates, trade balance you mentioned for Korea, capital flows, safe haven effect. We talked about Swiss franc before. Which one of these do you think affects the Swiss franc? Why is this one reason why the Swiss franc is overvalued? Safe haven effects. So if you are going to forecast the future, do you think the Swiss franc will get weaker? What if there's a crisis in the world? Is the Swiss franc going to get weaker? Maybe stronger, right? Because it has a safe haven effect. So if we look at the reasons behind why is there a discrepancy, then we can ha it helps us to understand, okay? Although these days, in Switzerland, there is uh, hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars of ta money which is be like in a tax haven, uh, and these days governments are trying to crack down on tax havens. Do you understand tax haven? Yes. Safe haven, tax haven. People put their money there to avoid paying tax. Okay. So if people crack down on Switzerland, and Switzerland has to give up its tax haven status, then it could change. Okay. Then the Swiss franc could get weaker. Also, we have this issue. So, up to now we just talked about single goods like a basketball or a Big Mac or coffee when talking about the absolute PPP model. But when the OECD or the World Bank calculates absolute PPP, it involves a market basket of goods, okay? Not just one. So, market basket exchange rates are published by both the OECD and the World Bank. So we wrote here, we found this number from the Economist magazine on the Big Mac. Is that the official number we're going to use for Korea? No, right? But we can just check the OECD. Is it similar or not? So here we have a list of all the countries in the world. So we can go and find uh, Korea here, right, on this line. Korea uses the one. And this is Probably you can't see it, but this is 2008, 2009. 2008, the one was 785 PPP rate. What well, one thousand or one dollar is 785 Korean won. So what is it now? So we need to go across to check the years. It's not working. It's 
not going across. Anyway, we can see that it was about. There's something unusual about the screen. I can't see it because it's moving. But we can see there for Korea 785, 824. So, uh, ah, here. Uh, currently 851. Okay, so this is the official number for 2015. So we can check on, you can look at yourself at this table about the different countries, the official numbers, okay? Uh, to find the current one, so it's laid out like this. They show you what the exchange rate should be according to the PPP. So we looked at the graph of Korea and Japan. Well, according to the OECD, it should be 850, right? Not even less, okay? So here we can look at other countries, where we can look at the actual and the PPP rate. So uh, let's look at the US dollar and the Japanese yen. So what's happening here? US dollar is currency on the left, the base currency. Is US dollar getting weaker or stronger against the yen? Weaker, right? Base currency going down is getting weaker. So first thing we can understand, US dollar getting weaker against the yen. Okay, we can see this is the PPP exchange rate. The official one, and then this is the market exchange rate. So we can notice here a little bit the PPP exchange rate, the US dollar was getting weaker, but in the market exchange rate, Japanese yen was getting stronger. But over the long term, it should be about the same here. So it, it came together and then went away again. US dollar and the Swiss franc. Uh, we can see that since 2005, the Swiss franc was constantly overvalued against the US dollar. Okay? So, again, the US dollar just getting slightly weaker uh, over that time when we would expect the uh, exchange rate to come together. So, here is the US dollar and the Chinese yen. Now they are moving together. We can see they are moving together, right? Why? China has managed exchange rate. So China is managing their exchange rate to let it get stronger. Against here, inflation in China is higher than in the US. Okay? Inflation in China around 8%, in the US around 2 or 3%. So because inflation in China is higher, Prices, inflation is higher, so the PPP is, is changing, right? In that case, the Chinese RMB is getting weaker on the PPP exchange rate. We saw it was about 3 point something on the Big Mac index, right? That's what it should be. But this is getting closer to 4. On the other hand, uh, in the market exchange rate, China is allowing their currency to get stronger against the dollar just in a gradual way. What, do you expect, what way do you expect this line to continue in the future? Continue to get closer. So do you think the Chinese currency will get stronger or weaker against the dollar in the future? Stronger. Stronger, right? We have to understand what's happening. The Chinese currency is, is greatly, was greatly undervalued against the US one, right? So in this case, the absolute PPP can have an effect on the exchange rate. It's going to come back closer together. Okay, euro and US dollar. Okay, it can we can see here that uh, the euro we are getting uh, more dollars than we should be. So the euro was overvalued against the US dollar, but recently it's come down again to 1.2, which seems to be about the long term uh, absolute PPP value for the euro and the US dollar. Okay, around 1.2. I was in the US here. I was quite happy. Everything in the US was very cheap. 
was 1.4 or 5 or something like that when I was in the US. So I was surprised at how cheap things were in the US. <laughs> rent, rent was cheaper in New York than in Dublin, for example. So, but kind of come back to this one. The pound and the dollar, okay, the, US, the Australian dollar and the US dollar. So what we can see from these graphs is that there is no rule. There is no rule that absolute PPP, the currencies have to move together. Okay? There could be some factors or reasons which says that, like Korea, it's going to continue as undervalued currency. right? Or like Switzerland, continue as an overvalued currency. But in some cases, we can see, like China, where there's large difference we can see the trend is the absolute PPP is having an effect. They're moving closer together. <clears throat> As we take away tariffs and have more free trade agreements, do you expect we will have more equilibrium or less equilibrium? More equilibrium, right? There should be less factors like tariffs and quotas, which is keeping uh, the things apart. Okay, so we said that we looked at the example of Japan blocking the rice farmers from the other countries, right? They want to keep their rice expensive. But if we make more free trade agreement, then no tariff, then the price of rice should get more similar and the exchange rate should be more similar. Yes. So, anyway, that's abs absolute. Purchasing power doesn't have the strong effect on the exchange rate. We can see that. Okay. Uh, more a stronger effect is the relative purchasing power parity. So this is the change in exchange in the exchange rate over time compared to the inflation between the two countries. So this is not we're not concerned about whether the Korean one and the US is correct or not. We're just worried about how much is this changing, okay, and how much is this changing. That's what we're concerned about. <clears throat> so the relative PPP model suggests that the spot exchange rates move in a manner opposite to the inflation difference between the two countries. So if we have inflation in Korea of 10%, and inflation in the US of 1%. What is the difference here? The difference is about 9%, right? So what do we expect will happen here? US, US trade, the Korean. Which one will get weaker, the Korean one or the US one? Korean currency or US currency, which one will get weaker? So sorry, 10% is in Korea. Inflation. One percent inflation in in America. Which currency will get weaker? Korea. Korea will get weaker. So this one. What will happen to this number? Go up or go down? Go up. Go up. Right. We can see that's been going up. In two thousand and eight, it was seven nine five, and then and so on. If inflation is higher in Korea, this is going to go up. Does that make sense? Yes. So that goes up, okay? And then this should follow. The market interest rate should follow, okay? Also will go up. <coughs> so relative PPP model suggests that the percentage change in the exchange rate should be equal to, but opposite in direction to, the difference in inflation. So we're talking about difference in inflation. So here we can see hyperinflation in Zimbabwe. Hyperinflation, it's very clear to see this kind of relationship. Okay. So how much is inflation in Zimbabwe? It's here, it's not that bad. It's around 2 or 3%, about 5%. Then we get to 2007. Uh, there is a revolution, a kind of civil war in Zimbabwe. A new government comes to power. Inflation, 
Do you want to keep your money in cash? <laughs> No. There's a war, so let's make a hole in the garden and put all our cash in the garden. No. What are you going to do with the cash? I'll buy your product. Buy what product? Bread? Oh. Eggs? Oh. Milk? Oh. Butter? Butter? Just the hmm? And US dollars. US dollars, right? Buy US dollars or buy gold or buy something like that, right? If you buy milk or butter, it'll go bad. <laughs> right? So here we can see that the same thing, the exchange rate, this is the exchange rate of the Zimbabwean currency to the US currency. So 60 trillion Zimbabwean dollars one American dollar. So hyperinflation. So you go to the shop one day, bread is is Chun one. The next day you go, it's man one. The next day you go, it's ship man one. <laughs> Do you want that kind of inflation? <clears throat> so, we already looked at this graph in the other document, but this is showing the relationship between over the long term. This is 1980 to 2000, 20 years. Okay, what is the average inflation and what is the change in the exchange rate? Here we have change in the exchange rate. Okay, and here we have change in purchasing power, change in inflation. So we can see that here is the country's exchange rate is getting stronger by 0 0.51, 0.52%, so average a year. So Japan's exchange rate is getting stronger. Also, Japan has more purchasing power. Okay? It means that it has no inflation. So it has we can see the relationship. We can draw the line. Okay? More or less. Switzerland, the same. Germany, the same. Netherlands, the same. All low inflation countries. Low inflation countries here. Okay? Low inflation countries, strong currencies. Okay? High inflation countries, so on this side is high inflation, is going to be, currency will get weaker over 20 years. <clears throat> so this graph tells us what we need to know about inflation and the exchange rate. Okay? Your Portugal or Italy, your currency is getting weaker and you have higher inflation. You are Japan or Switzerland, you have low inflation and your currency is getting stronger over the longer term. Which country has a higher interest rate, Japan or Portugal? Portugal, right? The interest rate follows inflation. <clears throat> so we have the same equation that we used for the interest rate, just we use it for inflation instead of the interest rate. The reason we use the interest rate is that the interest rate follows inflation. But we can find out uh, this one spot rate multiplied by 1 plus inflation by time over 1 plus inflation in the foreign currency by time. Okay? So instead of interest rate, we put in inflation. So it's the same equation. So let's just do this calculation just before we finish with inflation instead of interest rate. So we're the thing is we're using this one, the market, we're using the interest rate to make predict the future, right? This one with the PPP, we're using inflation. Okay? Inflation expectation to predict the future. So now you're calculating this one. Okay? So this is the spot rate for PPP, this is the inflation. So calculate the future PPP in two years.
So we can check our answers. So it should be 1.8, 1 plus 0 0.2 squared over 1 plus 0 0.3 squared. So we end up with 1.7653. Then we have a European terms. Uh, European terms, you can do the calculation at home. So uh, this is the as far as we will go for the midterm exam. Okay? Then the next class we'll do a review. And then next week we'll have the midterm exam. Do you have any question about what we studied today? Uh, good, good question. Do you have to remember this formula? No, on the test I'll give you. But I'll give you the two formulas, American terms or European terms. So you, have, you might have to decide which one. We need to use. We don't have to decide. Okay. We want to remember the formula. Oh, I. You want I try to try to. Next Thursday, yeah.